All right, so next up we're going to capture the form data that's submitted by the user and we're going to take that information and we're going to drop that into an AJAX request and we will send that off to the USDA to get the information that we're looking for. So um, first of all, what we're going to do is um, if we go back to our map here, our form is right here. So we have uh, the geolocation button and the search by zip code button. So when that is when when these are pressed, what we want to do is capture the information that's sent, and specifically this zip code right here. Because if that's um, sent over, we need to send the data to a different URL. So we have two URLs to use. One is for a zip code, and one is if we're using latitude and longitude. And we need to figure out which of the two we need to use. So going back to our code, I'm going to drop in a code snippet here. So what we're doing is we're grabbing the form data, so the choose zip ID. So on submit, we're going to run this function here. So choose zip. We'll go over to our index and look here. In our ID equals choose zip. So this form has an ID of choose zip, and our map.js file is going to capture the submit function once that, or the submit, submit action once that actually happens. Um, so what we're going to do here is going to do a couple things. First off is we're going to grab the value of our zip code box. So right here we have dot val and text zip. So what that's doing is it's looking for an ID of text zip and it's going to get the value and it's going to assign it to this user zip variable. So going back to our index.html, we're going to look for text zip and right here on this input you see text zip. So whatever that user enters in there, we're going to capture the value and assign it to user zip. Now we need to declare one more variable and this variable here is called access URL because like I said we have two different URLs that we need to use or two different that we have to choose from and we need to figure out which of the two to use so now we'll go ahead and do that and by or to do that we need to drop in this if statement here and let's clean up the code a little bit and down <clears throat> and we'll bring this up actually bring that down okay so this if statement is checking user zip so if there's a value for user zip our access URL is going to equal this and you can see at the end here there's a parameter called zip that's for zip code. So our user zip, which we grabbed here, the value of the text zip, assigned it to user zip, and now we're going to use it here for the access URL. So if there's a value assigned to it, if it's not empty, if, it, if there's a value, that's what we're going to use. Else, if this is there's no value in user zip, our access URL is going to be lat uh, the latitude and longitude. <clears throat> so you can look right here. Location search lat equals and LNG for longitude equals. So there's, I mean, this isn't the most efficient way to do it or the best way of doing it because, I mean, technically this user zip variable right here could have, you know, let's say um, someone just enters the letter A in there. We're not checking for anything like that. We're not really going deep into error handling, checking, and that kind of thing. I just, we're getting the basics done, just kind of covering that. In a real world scenario, you're going to want to expand this a little bit more. You're going to want to make sure that that's actually a zip code and you're actually passing it into here and, you know, return some kind of errors if, you know, it's, say they just don't enter a valid zip code. 
you're going to want to return that to the user. But again, this is just kind of the, the basics to get us up and running. So that's why we're doing it that way. So um, the last thing I wanted to show you on this portion of this video, on this submit function, what I didn't show you here was that we have a return false. Now this is important because it prevents the form from actually submitting um, in its default value. So if we don't do this, then when you actually submit the form, what will happen is you'll type in your zip code here, you'll hit search, and it's going to actually try and go to the action URL. So if we look in our index.html, there's actually no action assigned to it, but what's going to happen is it'll try and refresh the page and it's just going to cause a mess. So to prevent that, what we do is we just say return false and that's going to stop the form from doing what it's intended to do and um, JavaScript will take over and it will do what we want it to do, which is uh, this function right here. So the next portion of the video is going to be the Ajax uh, request portion and that will be our last video. Um, so what we'll do is we'll handle all the Ajax requests in that video and wrap everything up from there. So stick around, watch the next video.